Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about an idea known as Faint Young Sun Paradox that was actually proposed uh, back in the 70s by, our, by Carl Sagan and this hypothesis or this paradox has still not been resolved even today. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So let me briefly explain to you what this paradox entails and what it actually is all about and why it's a paradox and why we don't know what the answer is to it. I need to go to the solar system first and actually show you what our solar system looked like a few billion years ago, specifically maybe like four billion years ago. Back then the sun was, well, it was about the same in terms of mass, but it wasn't as bright as it is today. As a matter of fact, we think that it was about 70% as bright or as luminous, which means that we need to lower its luminosity to about 0.7. So it was actually creating a lot less energy and it was not as hot, it was uh, much younger. And because of this, obviously, the so-called habitable zone was actually a lot closer to where Venus is and much, much farther away from where Mars is. So Mars wasn't even in that region anymore. But most importantly, because of this, Earth didn't receive as much energy. And if I go to Earth right now, the average temperature here has now decreased quite dramatically. Now, don't forget, this is modern Earth. Earth back, th back then didn't actually look like this. And so here, the average temperature of Earth is about 2 degrees Celsius, meaning that for the most part, it would be actually covered in ice completely and would very, very likely be cold, miserable, and maybe even totally covered in ice like a snowball Earth. And some scientists go as far as to say that if uh, our understanding of solar evolution is correct and if our understanding of how planets are made is correct, Earth back then, if it was any similar to what it is today, could not actually have had temperature warm enough to have liquid water. So it most likely would have been completely frozen in ice. But we've studied uh, sediments on Earth and we've studied uh, various um, deposits on Earth that were about 4 billion and 3.8 billion years old. And we've discovered that, yeah, there was liquid water and Earth was actually warm. As a matter of fact, it might have been even warmer or hotter than it is today. So on top of that, there was also life. We discovered bacteria that is over 3 billion years old. And all of this indicates that there was liquid water and there had to be a uh, temperature warm enough to support this liquid water. So something is not right here, and this is why we call this Young Sun Paradox. So, what are the possible explanations? Well, there's actually quite a lot of explanations, but none of them is definitive. In uh, the previous video I made, I talked about how we think maybe it was because there was a lot more water vapor and this water vapor created a lot of greenhouse gas. And so the, one of the explanations is actually a greenhouse hypothesis, which sort of implies that there might have been so much more uh, greenhouse gas on our planet. And we can actually increase this by doing this, I guess. We're going to make this like several thousands um, and see if this actually changes anything. Nothing. Nothing has been changed. Okay, so maybe we'll just go and increase some atmospheric pressure just to indicate that there is more greenhouse gas here, making this about double. Does this change anything? I think I may have to wait a few years for this to kick in. And it is increasing the temperature just a little bit, but not enough to, to make a difference. So maybe the pressure has to be higher than what we currently have here. And it seems to be really, really difficult for me to change the temperature. As a matter of fact, it even fell further because I tried to play around with the climate settings here. It just doesn't seem to work very well. So even though we think that maybe just maybe there was a lot, of, a lot more carbon dioxide and possibly even methane, um, it's, it's very likely we would have seen these signs in the deposits that we found, the sediments that we found from billions of years ago. But we don't see any extra carbon dioxide or methane in those deposits. So the only greenhouse gas that may have affected this would have been water vapor. 
because they wouldn't actually be deposited in in those um, deposits in those sediments. So we don't really know if this is what happened, but chances are, if there was a greenhouse gas, it could only have been water. All right, so that's explanation number one. Like explanation number two is a little bit more down to earth, and specifically, it's actually related to the inside of the Earth and to the surface of the Earth. We think that maybe because Earth was younger back then, it was much, much warmer on the surface. And I guess we can simulate this by just kind of like colliding random stuff onto the surface of our planet just to warm it up from uh, basically collisions. Now, it wasn't the collisions that warmed it up. It was actually the um, radiogenic heat. It's basically the decay from things like potassium, uranium, and uh, various isotopes that, as they decay, they produce heat. And so the inside of the planet must have been warmer, and possibly the surface was warmer as well. And this could have been the reason why the Earth was warmer, but once again, there is just uh, not enough evidence to, to tell us if this is truth. All right, explanation number three is it's our beautiful moon. So back then, the moon was actually much, 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 much closer to our planet Earth. And here it was at a distance of just like 60,000 60, kilometers or so. And it was even closer at some point. Because it was so close, it produced a lot of, a lot of tidal heating effects. And both the moon and the Earth might have been actually warmer because of this. Now, the tidal heating is still a concept we don't really know super much about. We don't really know it very well. But it is quite possible that because of this tidal heating, uh, the moon was basically creating enough warmth on the surface of the planet that it made it warm enough to support liquid water. But there is a slight problem with this explanation, and the problem actually relates to our neighbor, Mars. And the problem is this. If this is true, why is it that Mars, which is even farther away, also had liquid water back then? This just doesn't add up. Mars also had liquid water. It doesn't have any moons to create uh, friction from tidal heating effects. So something just doesn't really add up. So maybe Moon produced uh, extra heat, but not enough for Earth to be completely liquid in terms of water. So explanation number three is once again kind of good, but not good enough. The fourth explanation is, I guess, a little bit more simple. Maybe we just don't understand how planets were formed. Maybe, just maybe, Earth... So let's just actually erase Moon for a second, because we don't really need it right now. Maybe just maybe Earth and all of the other planets in our solar system were actually a lot closer to the Sun. Maybe, just maybe, it was it was like somewhere where Venus is today. So maybe all of these planets were just located in a different location. And that's, I guess, possible, because here it would receive enough heat to, to have liquid water. But we don't really have enough support for this because our understanding of current solar system uh, evolution tells us that these four planets were created and stayed in a relatively similar region of space where they are today. They moved a little bit away from the sun, but not by much. And Jupiter, uh, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune did migrate, but they didn't affect these other planets. So. Uh, the planetary migration of Earth and Venus and, and uh, Mars may have not actually happened in this matter. Or if it did happen, it was much earlier. It wasn't when the Earth was already established. So this is not exactly accurate either. So, okay, if this is not accurate, what are some of the other explanations? And I guess there is another explanation. There is explanation number five. And this is actually the explanation that I sort of personally like the most. Now, let's go to our beaten and explored Earth, or Earth that has a lot of craters on it already, and just briefly talk about this really interesting phenomenon known as albedo. It's actually somewhere here. Uh, there it is. We can't really modify it right now, but we're going to cancel this just so we can modify it here. So, back then, there were two things that were different. One of those things is that we didn't actually have as many clouds. And I'll actually talk more about this later, but today we know that a vast majority of clouds is actually formed by various particles, specifically life-based particles, that create clouds in the, in the atmosphere. And back then, clouds were not as common. 
On the other hand, we didn't actually have as many continents either, which suggests to us that the albedo of our planet Earth was much, much lower. In other words, the planet was not reflecting as much light. It, it, it was much darker. So imagine like uh, if you walk somewhere um, in uh, during the sunny days and you step on something that's very dark and it's much hotter than everything else around you, that's because it has much lower albedo. And because back then Earth was basically just water and maybe just a little bit of continental shelves, it's very likely that its albedo was much lower and so it received a lot more sunlight. And because of this, because it reflected less sunlight, the temperature here was much warmer and thus the water was liquid. Now, this also means that maybe Mars had a similar sort of effect, but we still don't really know exactly how it worked on Mars. But for all we know that because of this higher albedo, that's why Earth was able to maintain higher temperatures. And that also would explain why when uh, ice shelves started to form, when albedo actually increased dramatically, we had a, a period that happened several times when Earth was completely covered in snow and we had what's known as the Snowball Earth. Basically, the entire planet was entirely covered in snow, which we'll simulate right now by doing this. So, this happened at least several times in history and one was a very, very large um, event that happened something like 2 billion years ago, known as Snowball Earth. And more recent one was about 630 million years ago. So, there are these five explanations. None of them is actually still sufficient to explain how Earth was able to maintain uh, warmer temperatures when sun was a lot more faint. And this is why today, and for the last uh, 40 years, it's been known as faint uh, young sun paradox. If you have a better explanation, or if you think you know more about this paradox, please post it in the comments below, because that's kind of all I know about it. If you know more, let me know. We'll maybe talk about it in one of the future videos. And anyway, that's all I wanted to say in this video, and hopefully you learned something from it, and now you know a little bit more about our beautiful Earth and its mysteries. I'll see you guys in the next video. Subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos. And as always, space out. Bye bye. Let's finish this by launching Titan and watching our beautiful Earth warm up as it basically gets bombarded by these remaining particles from Titan. See you guys later. Space out.